we will quickly simplify this electrical circuit by using KVL or mesh analysis. Now this is our electrical circuit where we can see we have two DC voltage sources and six resistors. So this is our DC electrical network and all the energy sources or voltage sources that we have in this circuit they are independent means their values are fixed constant that means their values don't depend on the voltage drop across any other component or current through any other component in other part of the circuit. So before applying Kirchhoff's voltage law or mesh analysis, we need to identify that how many meshes or loops are there in this circuit. So here we can identify that we have one, two, three, four individual loops. So in the second step, what we need to do, we need to assume some loop currents for all those loops. Now these are our loop currents, I1, I2, I3, I4. My sequence is I1, I2, I4, I3. We can take any sequence for this electrical circuit like I1, I2, this could be I3, this could be I4. Now in the next step, we will assess all those loops one by one. And we will try to develop some mesh equations or loop equations. And we know that in case of mesh analysis, the basic law that we use is Ohm's law. There we know that voltage drop across any resistor will be equal to the current that flows through that resistor multiplied by the resistance value. And we also know that while forming loop equations or mesh equations, we need to follow some convention. So when we are moving from positive to negative we can take that as our positive value or positive voltage or we can take negative voltage also but whatever convention we follow finally we will be getting the same values for i1 i2 i3 and i4 now here i am following that when we will be moving from positive terminal to negative terminal then we will be taking that voltage drop or that voltage value as positive voltage now we also know that current flows from higher potential to lower potential so if for the first loop if this is the direction of loop clockwise then for 10 ohm register this point will be at higher potential and this point will be at lower potential similarly with respect to i2 in the second loop since the direction of current is clockwise so with respect to that this point will be at higher potential this will be at lower potential with respect to i3 this will be at higher potential this will be at lower potential with respect to i4 this will be at higher potential this will be at lower potential now we will assess our first loop so if we start from this point we can start from any point of that loop now if we start from this point say then and we will be moving along the direction of the current so here first when we are approaching this resistor, we are first approaching the positive terminal of the resistor and then the negative terminal. So we are moving from positive to negative. So the voltage drop across this resistor will be 10 into I1 or we can say plus 10 into I1. Now when we are in the first loop and we are approaching this resistor, then current through this resistor is flowing. This I1 is flowing downward and this I2 is flowing in upward direction. So when we are evaluating or assessing the first loop with respect to that, the net current through 5 ohm resistor will be I1 minus I2. And with respect to I1, since we are moving from positive to negative terminal here, so the voltage net voltage drop here will be plus 5 into I1 minus I2. And then the turn of this voltage source comes. And when we are moving in this direction clockwise, then first we are approaching the negative terminal of this battery and then the positive terminal. So here we are moving from negative to positive terminal. So this voltage source or the voltage value of this voltage source will be taken as negative voltage. So it will be minus 20 and then it will be equal to zero because we know the algebraic sums of all the voltage values in our loop is zero. Now if we further simplify then this equation finally will be. So let's mark this as our first equation. Now we will go to the second loop. The way we did for first loop we will also be doing the or applying the same approach for the second loop also let's start from this point and let's move along the direction of the current so when for this register we will be moving from positive terminal to negative terminal by following the direction of the current the voltage drop across this register will be taken as positive so it will be 10 i2 
now when we will be approaching this voltage source or battery first we are having here the positive terminal and then we will be getting the negative terminal of this battery so here the voltage value of this voltage source will be taken as positive so it will be plus 40 and then the turn of this resistor comes now we are in the second loop so with respect to the second loop the direction of i2 is upward and the direction of i1 is downward so the net value of current through this resistor with respect to the second loop will be i2 minus i1 and we will be following the path or direction of i2 that's why this point will be at high potential and this will be at lower potential so the voltage drop across this resistor will be 5 into i2 minus i1 now after simplification this equation finally will be so let's mark this as our second equation now we will simplify equation 1 and equation 2 and here we have two variables i1 and i2 and after solving we will be getting the values of these variables or these currents and to do that we will multiply this equation by 3 so this equation finally will be 3i1 minus 9i2 and that will be equal to 24 so after solving those two equations for i1 and i2 finally we are getting the value of i1 the current in the first loop as 0 0.5 ampere and the value of the current in the second loop as minus 2.5 ampere minus sign here signifies that as per our assumption the direction of the loop current was clockwise so if the current is coming as negative that means actually the direction of the current will be opposite to our assumption that means in the second loop the current is actually flowing in anti-clockwise direction next we will simplify for third loop and fourth loop the way we did for first loop and second loop and we will follow the same concept same rules here also now after applying the same rules in loop 3 and 4 we have developed these two equations that we have marked as equation 3 and equation 4 next we will simplify these two equations for these two unknown variables i3 and i4 and we will find their values mean the values of the currents in the third loop and in the fourth loop so after solving equation 3 and 4 finally we are getting the value of i3 as minus 0 0.5 ampere and i4 1.5 ampere so here again the value of i3 is coming as negative that means the actual direction of i3 is opposite to our assumption that we took for the direction of i3 now in the question it was actually asked the total power dissipation in the whole circuit so now we have found all the current values and we know all the resistance values also we know that power consumption or power dissipation across a resistor is i square r square of the current value multiplied by the resistance value so we will do that one by one for every resistor and finally we will add all those power consumption for every individual resistor and then that will be the final value of power consumption total power consumption now here i have marked all these resistors by this uh, symbols one two three then four five six and accordingly i will symbolize or i will represent the power dissipation across all those resistors so let's calculate one by one now to find p1 the power dissipation across this register we have considered the current flowing through this register and that is i1 and the value of i1 was 0 0.5 ampere so here half means 0 0.5 square and into 10 and that is finally 2.5 watt similarly for p2 the current flowing through this register then we have taken the square value of that and the current value was minus 2.5 ampere so whether it is minus 2.5 or plus 2.5 when we will be taking the square value the final value will be positive only and the minus value as i said is just because of the direction so here the finally the power across this register will be 62.5 watt and let's find the power dissipation across this register now here we need to consider the net current through this register so here i1 was 0.5 ampere and i2 was minus 2.5 ampere now if we think with respect to the first loop then it will be i1 minus i2 so it will be like 0.5 minus of minus 2.5 5 so finally it will be 3 ampere the net current flowing through this register and if we think with respect to the second loop then we need to consider the direction of i2 and with respect to that it will be 2.5 minus 2.5 
since i2 is minus 2.5 and then i2 minus i1 so minus of 0 0.5 so again it is coming as minus 3 ampere so value wise it's in both the cases it is 3 ampere only and negative sign is because of the direction so finally the power dissipation across this resistor will be 45 watt and similarly for p4 p5 we have found by applying the same logic and for p6 we need to consider the net current flowing through this resistor and for that also if we think from this third loop then the net current flowing through this resistor will be i3 minus i4 now our i3 is minus 0 0.5 and i4 is minus i4 is 1.5 ampere so i3 minus i4 so it will be finally minus 2 ampere and if we think from the fourth loop then it is i4 minus i3 so i4 is 1.5 ampere and minus i3 and i3 is minus 3 itself is minus 0 0.5 so it will be again finally 1.5 plus 0 0.5 so 2 ampere so value wise it is 2 ampere only and again the negative sign is because of the direction so power dissipation across this resistor will be i square r and because of that it will be 20 watt and the total power dissipation in the given electrical circuit is 180 watt i hope this class was meaningful for you thank you